My dream stands in front of me, still warm, and although awake, I am still full of its anguish. And then I remember that it is not a haphazard dream, but that I have dreamt it not once, but many times since I arrived here, with hardly any variations of environment or details. And then the small explanation of the Shoah. In 1940, the Germans were giving orders and the administration was following very nicely. So uh, they say to all the Jews, you have to register. So that when in 42 the, the Germans started to send people to Malin and to Auschwitz, it was very easy. You had everything under the hand, the address, the names of the father, the mother, grandfather, grandmother, kids, everything was registered. not consider the massacre of little children in Gaza as a violation of human rights. The EU condemns illegal settlements as a violation of international law, yet the association agreement remains. We MEPs who went to Palestine call on the European Council and Commission, plus fellow MEPs from all parties, to play a constructive political role in the Middle East and become active players in ending the occupation of Palestine within an agreed time frame. Almost entirely, Europeans don't understand the Middle East. Europeans have a long history of dividing and conquering the Middle East with grand colonial calamity, America wasn't even thought of when Europe was playing Empire of the Sands. Arabs in North Africa and the Middle East were pushed into nationhood with borders which made no sense to local tribes. Unfortunately, Europeans tend to think about the Middle East as if it is like Europe. Since Europeans, in spite of their European history, uh, reached a point which they can live with each other and cooperate with each other, they think that, uh, well, if you just uh, give them this, this and that, uh, everybody in the Middle East will sit around the fire and sing Kumbaya together. Well, uh, this, is the, this is wrong, because in the Middle East, people are fighting each other on the heritage of Muhammad, the prophet of Islam. Peace be upon him. You know, the Sunni Shi uh, struggle is for 14 centuries about the question who was the legitimate caliph, whether it was the fourth one, Ali bin Abi Talib, or the fifth one, Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan. And since they were fighting in the 7th century, people are fighting until this very day. What is justice? How do we decide what is right and wrong, good and evil? How do we decide whether an army is acting with necessary restraint or with unacceptable force? How do we decide what a war crime is when the dust hasn't settled from a conflict? Answer some of these questions and Europe may get a little closer to understanding the Middle East and be capable of acting as a trusted partner for regional stability. Why is it that in other cases the war criminals are dragged to court and the victims are invited to give testimony, while in this case the victims are being constantly blamed for their own misery and the perpetrators enjoy full impunity? Nicolai Berger, director of Amnesty International's European Institutions Office, told us war crimes have been committed once again on both sides by the Israeli forces and Hamas military wing and other Palestinian armed groups during Operation Protective Edge. The international community, including the EU, must do everything at its disposal to ensure war crimes and other violations are investigated and that justice is served on both sides. You served in military intelligence. Do you think that Israel's response can be presented as proportionate? Uh, unfortunately, a proportionate uh, answer is required only in Israel, demanded only from Israel. I don't remember that uh, NATO uh, acted in Libya, for example, in a pro pro proportionate way against Gaddafi. What did Gaddafi did to NATO? I don't remember. Uh, I'm not so sure that the war against Saddam was proportionate. I'm not sure that uh, bombing uh, 
a wedding party in Afghanistan is in any way proportionate. But when it comes to Israel, the whole world starts uh, calling upon Israel to, to act in a proportionate way. This is some kind of uh, hypocrisy. I do honestly believe that this government doesn't want to have peace. But on the other hand, we met a lot of organizations, either of Israeli citizens or both Israeli and Palestine, that want the peace and are trying very hard to fight for it. After two or three thousand years, nothing has changed because if you have got a small thing, you know, that's, yeah, it must be destroyed. Hamas is no different from many other entities in the Middle East, which Israel has to convince once in a while that for their good, they should leave Israel alone. In one word, it is called deterrence. I think that deterrence vis-a-vis -vis Egypt brought the peace between Israel and Egypt, the same thing with Jordan. So uh, if Israel wants to live in peace, it means to live in a way which our neighbors will leave us alone. Israel was saying we can't we can't really negotiate with one part of a Palestinian entity. We need to have all of the Palestinians agreeing. And so Fatah and Hamas agreed, got round the table, and at that very moment Israel seen that more as a threat. Hamas thinks in a different way, uh, using different um, mindset, different scale of priorities, different values from Europeans. And if our Europeans try really to understand Hamas through European eyes and criteria, a set of values and priorities, definitely they come to a dead end very easily because you cannot explain the jihad mindset through European uh, values. Hamas is a genocidal organization. If you think it's a biased viewpoint, then read their defining constitution and then read the International Criminal Court's definition of genocide. Hamas does not have as its primary goal the creation of a Palestine state. The reason Hamas exists is to destroy Israel. And yet, too many European politicians cannot bring themselves to condemn Hamas. They are quick to condemn Israel for its actions, and often their comments are merited, but they do not condemn Hamas. How can any politician in Europe speak of freedom and democracy, the right to life and equality, and yet they cannot condemn Hamas for its pursuit of genocide? Hamas is taking the population in Gaza as hostage. You have seen during the conflict, people who disagree with Hamas, they were executed. Is it consistent with European values and policies to accept Hamas as a normal political party simply because they won at the ballot box? Hitler won at the ballot box. That didn't work out so well. Hamas uh, is on uh, the list of terrorist organizations listed by the European uh, Union, which implies uh, no contact policy. It's not a partner because all they want is the destruction of Israel. So how can you speak with someone who wants to annihilate, annihilate you? It's impossible. What leverage does the European Union have with Hamas? The only leverage is to tell to Israel is that they have to communicate to Hamas too. Because uh, calling Hamas as a terrorist group, and maybe it is, uh, without having any discussion with them, you can't reach any solution. There is no intellectual inconsistency in condemning Hamas for genocidal actions and condemning Israel for excessive use of force in the Gaza conflict. Israel has a case to answer. Its friends and enemies are united in saying so. And that does not make a critic of Israel any less a friend. As the EU ambassador in Israel said, it's impossible to come to the situation as it was before. We need a demilitarization of, of the Gaza Strip complete. And uh, I think the best way to do it would be for uh, Palestinian Authority forces to take uh, over the crossing between Israel and Gaza. So uh, this would be a, a sort of uh, guarantee that uh, Hamas uh, cannot uh, again build terror tunnels 
or start uh, again uh, launching rockets. What we need to see is this unity government continue working to the benefit of all Palestinian people on the basis of principles that are very clear, such as the right of Israel uh, to exist and acceptance of all uh, previous agreements. And what is also very clear is that only a negotiated solution, a long-term solution, is really the way forward. It takes courage to compromise and, you know, compromise is inherent within the process of change. I, as a former prisoner, if I had a thought says to you at that stage, when I was in a Durham jail, without toilets, slopping out, being strip searched six times a day when I was uh, in prison in Brixton. And, you know, when I think about our hunger strikers and Bobby Sands and all that struggle, that we, and I also think of all the people that were hurt and all the people that we hurt. You know, it was very difficult in them situations. I could have never said to you, you know, one day I will be standing talking to you as a member of the European Parliament. How do we measure what is right and wrong? European policy starts with the humanist, rationalist, humanitarian principles and values. Values which come clearly from the Judeo-Christian tradition. It must then deal with the chaotic mix of Muslim tribes and sects, many of whom are utterly opposed to Western traditions. And at the same time, Europe must support Israel, the only stable democratic state in the Middle East, while openly maintaining a critical position regarding Israel's military and humanitarian excesses. excesses which most of Israel dislikes but sees as necessary to ensure its own survival. For Israel, they say that the first war it loses will be its last. Let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first.